everyone, this is Joanna. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you'll enjoy this video so much that you will click that subscribe button at the end. And to all my subscribers, thank you guys so much for coming out every week and watch my videos and inspire me to create more DIYs. And with that being said, let me show you all the neat projects that I have prepared for you guys today. I simply cannot wait to share them with you. They are very versatile and very simple to make. And for the first DIY, I'm grabbing three of those neat baskets from the Dollar Tree. And I also have a piece of plywood. I believe I'm going to measure it. It measures at 17 and a half inches long, but it totally depends on how many baskets you're going to be using for this project. I am also going to be using three glass jars, and those are actually candle jars from my holiday candles. I melted the wax and I cleaned them out and they are beautiful and ready to go. I also have four little blocks from the Dollar Tree game. I filled in the holes with the wood putty and they are also ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to use stain, wood stain and walnut, dark walnut. But all my wood pieces and my glass jars are going to get a couple of coats of chalk paint and porcelain color. Now that everything is sustained, I'm going to attach my three baskets to my plywood. Now that the baskets are nice and secure, you can see where I'm going with it. You can totally put greenery in there if you wish. And let's get back to my glass jars. Basically, I want to create a front and I want the design to flow between the three of them. So I'm grabbing a pencil and I'm going to design a line that runs through. But before I do anything else, I want to make sure that I know where is my front. So I'm putting one, two, and three right below the, below the jar so I will know how I'm going to place them on top of my stand. And now I'm trying to decide how I want the lines to go because I'm going to be adding sand to them. And basically, I feel that if I'm going to display them, together we will have a really nice flowing design. One thing that I'm going to tell you is do not press the pencil too hard because yes you are going to add sand to it but sand may not always cover the harder the, the darker parts of the pencil. But you can see that I have this wave going between the three of those glass jars. And now you can just go back and you can finish it off. You know exactly where your front is. So of course you, you want to finish that, that little wave on each individual jar. And once you're done with that, we are going to add Mod Podge to your area marked by the pencil line. So just make sure that you fill it nicely with Mod Podge the thicker the layer of the Mod Podge, the thicker the layer of the sand is going to be. So just do that and then sprinkle it with some sand and you're going to have a beautiful, beautiful piece to display on our wooden stand. Okay, so here I added my little wooden blocks to the bottom part of the plywood. So at the bottom you have the three baskets attached, so this is the opposite side. That's how it's going to make this versatile. And now I can just add a polyurethane to it or any kind of varnish or Mod Podge just to finish it off. And here you have it. I was talking about the versatility. So here you have the baskets actually at the bottom and you have the glass display on top and you can see that wave going through. So we can display it this way or you can flip it around and you have those little little legs underneath uh, 
so it looks much nicer and finished and you can put your greenery inside the baskets. All right, and off we go to the next project. This one is also going to be versatile, kind of, and I found this round wood from Michaels, and I wanna find a center point. So I just cut a piece of paper the same size, and I'm gonna fold it twice the opposite way so that that way I know exactly where the center point is. I'm sure that there are different ways of doing that, but this is just very simple for me. So now you can just place the paper on top of the wood and grab something sharp and mark your center point, and you're going to do it on both sides, on the front and on the back. Now that we have the center point, I'm going to grab my wooden spoon and I'm going to add some wood glue to it and also I'm adding hot glue to make it stick a little bit faster, but the wood glue is going to give it a nice strong bond. I know we use glue gun all the time, but wood glue I always believe that is the best bet when you're adding two pieces of wood together and I'm adding a nail with my little nail gun from the bottom into the wooden spoon and I'm giving it a nice varnish uh, rub with the walnut, dark walnut stain. And I'm grabbing three cans. I'm going, they are very, very shiny. So I'm grabbing black, a dark silver gray and also pewter and I'm just going to dab those colors all over just to bring down the shine we're gonna be putting stuff on top of it but with the way we're gonna work with it you still need to get rid of that crazy shine that we're getting from clean cans started off with applying pewter then I went on I added some black and I finished it off with the dark gray silver and there you have it definitely not as shiny as before and this is exactly what I was after and now let's stamp a little bit I'm so excited I'm using tissue paper which I cut to the uh, dimensions of the can so that it's overlapping just a tiny bit and you know that I'm a paper crafter and I love stamping I really truly do so this was just such a little bonus for me and I'm using a stamping up um, stamp I forgot the name of it but it has like postage and airmail and things like that on it so I'm just gonna place it on the, on the paper and add a lot of ink to the stamp it's a background stamp so I'm gonna leave it laying down when I'm gonna be uh, uh, transferring the image. So um, just a quick rub with the ink pad and then the tissue paper is going to go on. And I'm going to use the paper on top of the tissue paper to get a beautiful imprint. And it's very simple because the tissue paper is so thin that it absorbs the ink in no time. And of course my ink pad is not big enough for the entire tissue paper, so I kind of have to do it in uh, two different parts. Now applying Mod Podge to the can. Um, so you're just gonna give it a generous amount of Mod Podge and we're going to start applying the tissue that is stamped on the can. Now when you're gonna start applying it, and you're gonna see it in just one second, it's very delicate and at the, the top I'm kind of putting it right underneath the lip of the can and then everything else just hanging down and I'm gonna delicately attach it and you know that you're going to start getting the Mod Podge on your fingers because this is just a tissue paper it's just gonna go through it like you know like nothing so you just kind of have to tap it and make sure that it gets in the grooves and what I like about this is that when it's gonna dry it's not gonna be very 
uh, dominant. You're not going to really see right away what it is, but it's going to bring interest to the can. People will be looking, it's like, what is this? And, and then they're going to see all those designs from the airmail and stamps and everything else. I, I really do like that. I think it catches everybody's eyes. So right here you just have to go in and work it and sometimes you're going to get the tissue stuck to your paper at your fingers and it's going to pull off and in the beginning I was like oh my goodness it's pulling off but then at the end actually it looks kind of neat when certain parts are missing and here I'm just adding a little bit of paint to it I sponged it a little bit darker in color and I'm putting mud patch to it to give it a finish finishing touch I grabbed three little circles and chalkboard paint and I'm going to paint them with the chalkboard paint and you probably are, know that I'm going to be creating little tags. And this little guy already is nicely dried so I'm just going to put varnish on it and I'm using polyurethane and matte. So now my cans are done, my stand is done. All I have to do is glue gun everything together. So that's what I'm doing. I'm adding glue to the bottom of the can and also to the spoon so that the can has more, more, uh, is, there's, well, what shall I say? Less movement to the can. And of course, I'm going with my little nail gun. I'm going to shoot a couple of nails in it. Yes, they are sticking out on the other side, just a tiny little bit, but that's okay. It's, it's not gonna do any damage to it. And here you have my tags. I just attached them to clothespins and uh, there you go. I did not wanna uh, do anything permanent. Like, you know, I'm going to be using it for forks and spoons and knives. I didn't want, did not want to put it on the cans because I may not wanna use it all the time for forks, spoons and knives. That, why, that way I'm getting versatility. I can get, I can uh, use it as a vase, for example, here. So what do you think about it? I think it came out pretty cool. And for my next project, I'm using a glass plate. And also this is a beer can, a oh, beer can, <laughs> a beer glass. I painted them with chalk paint and plaster. And uh, now I'm grabbing some tissue paper and I'm gonna squish, squish, squish. I'm gonna squish as much as I can it. I'm gonna squish it some more and then squish it some more after that. <laughs> and now I'm gonna go and start applying Mod Podge to my glass that already has the porcelain chalk paint on it. And then as soon as I put the Mod Patch on, tissue is going on. And you can see that I'm getting this really awesome design, which I absolutely love. And you can move it with fingers. You can, it's almost like marbly kind of design that you're starting to get. And you're just gonna move it around the, the glass. You know, you're done with one part, you're gonna move on to the next. You're gonna add more Mod Patch to it and more tissue and move it around with your fingers. And then we're gonna put it on the side and we're gonna let it dry and after it is dry I'm going to do to add more mud patch to it and here it's not completely dry I'm still trying to fix it with my brush and um, and move it move it around just a little bit and after it is completely dry and all the lines are set you are going to put another another layer of Mod Podge followed by some paint and I'm using once again the chalk paint Waverly chalk paint in porcelain color and now I'm grabbing my plate and I also added the paint to the top of the plate but that was afterwards and now I'm going to put my wooden beads all around my plate it's a little bit of time consuming but it will look great when you're done with it and here you have it doesn't look just so pretty and now the beads are going to get paint white in it and we are going to be done with our project because i'm going to glue gun this plate to my 
uh, to my stand or the upside down glass and it is going to be it look at that it looks so beautiful I love how the tissue came out it adds so much texture to the stand very very pretty it came out way better than I anticipated well so what do you guys think about the projects I told you that they were not gonna be difficult and I really love how versatile they are this one is probably the least versatile but that one here oh my gosh you can just flip it over and get a completely different look and I like how the vases have that wave going through beautiful I'm very very happy with the fact that I created things that can have such a different looks and the same thing for my fork um, fork carrier or fork spoon knife carrier it can also be a vase so I'm I'm really really glad that I really tackled those projects and they came out the way they did well my friends i hope you enjoyed this video if you did make sure that you click that subscribe button and to all of my subscribers guys thank you so much for being here with me until next time my friends ta-ta